We're here at the Autosport International Show, the NEC in Birmingham, an annual mecca for motorsport fans, drivers, engineers, and of course the staff of our magazine. We're going to take a look around the show and show you some of the best highlights for this segment of our show. But you can read the full report in the next issue of the magazine, which is on sale now. So, tell me who you are and tell me what it is you do. Well, I'm Alex Sher, I'm project manager of Racing Green Endurance and I started the project back in January last year. And what is the project? The project is um, taking a Radical SR8 and modifying it into an electric vehicle, a high performance, road legal electric vehicle, and then driving it the 26,000 kilometres of the Pan American Highway for summer. So, driving a Radical 26,000 kilometres, any Radical? On public roads yeah. <laughs> is a little bit crazy. It is a little bit crazy, yes. Um, the whole idea, the concept behind it all was to demonstrate to the public that electric cars are cool and they can be fast and they're sexy and they can compete with their petrol counterparts. Now, taking, uh, with all due respect, perhaps you know, a Volvo or something and converting that into an electric vehicle and doing that to try and persuade public opinion to change is nowhere near as exciting as using a car like the Radical. To, to show people what, what electric cars are really capable of. So why did you select a Radical? For the exact reason, they just look so sexy, they look so cool. And if people can see, right, you know, you've got the G-Wizzers on one end and you've got the amazing, high-performing, uh, expensive Radicals on the other, then the automatic assumption is there must be and there can be something in the middle. And if they start requesting that, the public start wanting that product in the marketplace, then one would hope the big car companies, the Fords and GMs and everything else will start providing this, this market. So tell me about the, the drive system, is that developed by you guys? The drive system is entirely developed by us. Uh, the main components being batteries, motors, motor controller and control system. Um, and we've worked with a number of our sponsors and partners to develop custom uh, solutions for these uh, various components. Now, the batteries, I know from looking at various electric cars that batteries are real difficult air in the battery control. Tell me about the batteries first. Well, the batteries are lithium ion phosphate uh, batteries from Thundersky in China. Um, very energy dense, very safe, that's possibly one of the key features. They can't explode and they can't burn. Um, they just release a bit of pressure and then they are safe. Um, and they are they're very good for our purpose, they're already pre-packaged, um, very stable. Um, so that's, that's why we're using those batteries. And how does the weight compare? Now, did you choose the, the battery pack? It's quite big in the back of the car. I mean, it, have you gone for longevity rather than dynamic ability? Not really. I mean, they, they perform extremely well. And we've just, from the off, we wanted the largest and most powerful pack, or most uh, energy dense battery pack there was. And so what we did is we got a bit, as many batteries as we could in the rear and in the side pods of the car. And that's given us more energy and hence more range than even the Tesla, which is the current market leader. What about the charge rate? Um, tell me about that. Well, very simply, it plugs into up to three normal main sockets, plugs straight into the car, and that from empty empty, and you never really drive to empty empty, um, gives you about eight hours charging time. Obviously, uh, if you know you go there and you've still got a quarter tank left, it's much less. Now, when a battery is discharging, we all know this, you can charge and discharge the battery, it gets hot. Yeah. Do you have to cool your battery? No. Now, that's quite unusual. How do you manage that? Well, basically, um, these batteries can draw a thousand amps if you wanted to, and, um, and still survive with just air cooling. And we are only ever maximally drawing about 200 to 300 amps, and not even continuously. Our continuous current is much lower. So, and we've done our tests and we just they don't even get above 40 degrees Celsius or so and, uh, and they are safe up to over 80 degrees Celsius so we really don't need any active cooling on the batteries. But I, I was told earlier by one of your colleagues that the battery management system does need cooling. No, no. the battery management system has, um, has resistors on them which need heat sinks and what have you but uh, the battery management system doesn't have any uh, forced cooling either. And is that of your own design? That's uh, our custom design developed between us and one of our partners, Race Nash. And um, that, as you said, does monitor temperature, but it doesn't control either its own temperature or the battery. Now, I noticed the Fraser Nash logos on the car. Is that the famous Fraser Nash of years gone by? It is part of the famous Fraser Nash of years gone by. Uh, as far as I understand it, Fraser Nash uh, split into two sort of Fraser Nashes. One which still does, uh, you know, uh, mechanical racing things, 
and uh, the other phrase in Ash which does things like monorails and more electric car design and, and powertrain design. Now, speaking of powertrain, you've got to, we've talked about the batteries and the management system. To power one of these, you need motors. So tell me about your motors. Do you need motors? We have two Evo electric motors, which peak at about 144 kilowatts each, so around 200 horsepower each. So very powerful, uh, very dense. They're only 40 kilos each, so 80 kilos for 400 horsepower. Um, they are permanent magnet AC synchronous motors, and really the best in the market at the moment. 650 newton meters of torque straight on the shelf which means for our road application we don't even need to gear it, it's a direct drive to the wheel. And um, yeah, fantastic piece of equipment. And uh, will you be driving the car yourself? I will be, as will the other members of the team as well. Do you have any experience driving in a like radical? Absolutely none. <laughs> it's going to be great fun. Well, <laughs> good, good luck and uh, hopefully after 26,000 miles you're going to be... Uh, yeah. Kilometers, you'll yeah. be at the northern tip of Canada and... Uh, Let's hope so. <laughs> and good time. Well, thank good you. luck with that and Cheers. thank you. Thank you. So we're sat here at the Autosport Show in a slightly unusual looking race car here. I'm here with its creator, Ray. Firstly, Ray, who are you? Yeah, the RST. Hi, it's me, Mark. I'm Ray Danielson, and uh, I'm hail from Australia. And uh, I'm a uh, past uh, Australian State Rally Champion. And uh, a few years ago, I obviously uh, decided that I might like to build my own car. And, uh, and now what is this model exactly? Okay, it's called the Skelter, it's the main, and uh, it's the Spider. Um, this is the uh, uh, SR, uh, hang on, I've got to think for a moment, SR 460. Uh, and that means it's got a 460 horsepower hard V8 engine in front, the red leader. Um, but basically, um, this is an evolution of the Skelter G-Force, which was the first uh, car that I designed. Now, Skelter. That's not your name. That's nowhere in Australia that I can find on the map. What is a Skelter? Skelter, um, it just happens to be that uh, while the uh, whole concept of this car was coming together, um, uh, the Beatles held uh, song held a Skelter came on the radio and, and I thought, yeah, that could be interesting. So uh, that's where the name came from. Now, I'm looking at this car. You mentioned you're a state rally, you're called a state rally champion here in Australia. This is definitely not a rally car. What, what's this designed for? Well, the basics of this car stem from the tarmac rally. Uh, the basic architecture of the Spider here is, the, is underneath is the same as the G-Force, and the G-Force was designed as a tarmac rally car. This car is obviously a circuit car. Uh, whether it be track days, I mean, it could well be sort of sprints um, uh, or circuit racing, but uh, this car is definitely uh, track focused. Uh, as opposed to uh, a tarmac rally. Now, from the goals to the back, to the, to the louvers and the distinctive front end, this car's clearly got some quite developed aerodynamics. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, when we first started the uh, development of the G-Force, um, uh, you know, apart from the obvious things like, you know, uh, minimal weight, you know, and here we have a composite uh, carbon fiber body, um, and, you know, decent power and, and, and good suspension systems and all that sort of thing. I wanted to create basically the first road going car uh, that, that uh, generated decent downforce. And with the G Force, we actually have um, uh, approximately 200 kilograms of downforce at 90 miles an hour. So it's quite significant, even at relatively low speeds. Um, however, in this car here, obviously, we want to take that to a different level. So what we've done is we've uh, done quite a bit of uh, work with CFD. I've never had it in time, but with CFD. To, um, to uh, up the um, uh, aerodynamics package, you know, even beyond the, the G-Force package. Now, are we going to see this racing in the USA, the UK, Australia in the next year, or year and a half? Um, this car has already raced in Australia, and at its fir very first meeting it, it went on pole, so uh, we we're very pleased about that. Uh, th this one is actually the prototype uh, uh, Spider. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we will see it racing, uh, depending on uh, where this car goes, and, and also depending on uh, when we build the next one. But uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, the G Force has done a lot of uh, racing, both track work, hill climb work, uh, sprints, and all that sort of thing in its 
Australia. And, um, you know, uh, we will be seeing that car in the GT Cup Series. And, um, uh, hopefully this year in, in the UK and they run a couple of overseas uh, races in that series as well. Now, finally, the question that every prospective buyer is going to ask at some point, how much do one of these set me back? Well, it depends on the configuration, because we can uh, very much uh, tailor it to suit the application. Um, uh, but basically, uh, 99,000 pounds upwards. Um, this particular one we're sitting in with today will be 80,000. Excellent. Well, thank you, and I look forward to seeing this out on the tracks in 2010. So, good luck with the car, and good luck with the racing. Thank you.